Hey everybody, this is Ben Rall from Highway 3 Angler in Alaska's Susitna Valley. Uh, I want to apologize for coming on late tonight. Uh, we're having some technical difficulties, um, even though we were, we tried to work to work out all the technical difficulties over the weekend. And now, um, of course, when it's time to go live, we're having some issues, but, um, Thanks for joining me tonight. Um, tonight we're going to be tying two flies. And we have a special uh, guest tire. Um, our, our guest tire for tonight is Rich Johnson. And we'll be getting to him shortly. And he'll be tying in a uh, UV diamond fry. That looks a little like that. This is one I tied. His will look better. And then uh, also going to tie uh, Pete's Pup, which looks like this here. Uh, since this is a live uh, stream, if you could let me know if there's any sound or lighting issues in the comments, uh, that should be interesting tonight because we're having some slow internet speeds here. Uh, also, these videos will be uh, archived on Facebook and on the Highway 3 Angler YouTube page. Um, if you have any questions tonight, please uh, type those into the Facebook comments section. We'll, we'll answer those as the tying session goes along tonight. Um, also in the comments is the question of the night. And, the, and that question is, where are you watching from and what do you consider your home water? So if you could uh, let us know in the comments, that would be great. Um, and I want to thank, or I want to welcome uh, members of Alaska Fly Fishers who are tuning in tonight. Uh, looks like we're having some, some slow internet speeds, but yeah, I want to thank the members of Alaska Fly Fishers for tuning in tonight. Uh, let us know where you're watching from again and and what your home waters are. So next, uh, I'm going to bring in Rich Johnson. <laughs> Welcome, Rich. <laughs> uh, Rich is a past president of the Alaska Fly Fishers. Um, he does some work with the Bristol Bay Guide Academy. Um, he's an excellent fly tire and fly designer. Uh, I've taken a number of, uh, not classes, but um, participated in a number of his demonstrations. And uh, he's, a, he's a fantastic teacher and ties some, some great flies. So tonight, uh, like I said, Rich is gonna tie his UV Diamond Fry. Looks like that. So, Rich, can you uh, you hear me out there in Anchorage? Yeah, can. Got a little bit of jerkiness, so I'm just going to go with it for uh, <laughs> what I have. All right. Thanks for uh, joining us tonight. No worries. Um, yeah, I'm getting different feeds, so I'm not sure what you're seeing. So. Okay. Well, what... I'm all ready to pass it over to you, Rich. All right, cool. So, uh, Ben, do me a favor, cut away for a second. I'm going to go in and change the focal distance from uh, back here. Sure. Where you can see me up to where it'll focus in on the fly and stand. Yep. And we hopefully it'll lock. Okay, we'll give you a second there, Rich. And we have Katie's joining us from Houston. Yeah. <laughs> we lost Rich's video feed. I got to figure out where you are again. All right. Good. All right. So we're live. And as soon as you're good to go, let me know. All right, you're good, Rich. Okay, so good. Rich. good. Uh, 
Um, I don't want to contradict Ben. Why does it all being the same? So this is the UV diamond fry. Um, I gave it a name off of the body material, really all, and it was specifically designed to help imitate the um, sockeye fry that migrate out uh, really early in the fall. Uh, um, or really early spring. Uh, this fly is about an inch to an inch and a quarter long. It's fry um, in late April and very early May, and some of the streams before they close down. Really takes just uh, three materials in addition to the hook. Uh, um, natural marabou. Often I'll check also where you can. But this is really what I buy because I find it's a lot easier to use and sort through. Mini UV diamond braid. Braid. Uh, this comes on a spool, and this really name comes from. And then the eyes, 330 seconds is the size that'll fit into on this it's super pearl as opposed to uh, silver. Uh, a little more reflective, and I think sometimes that helps. Another net, we'll just get started, and I'll just talk my way through this. Hook net is a number eight. It's a Daiichi. Uh, 1270 or a Tiemco R200. That's kind of the style. It's three extra long to give it a body length. I use a gray thread um, because I have a couple of flies that I tie with this thread and it matches the body style. White, excuse me, white works and I wouldn't worry about it. If you don't have any gray, just go with what you have. Attach your thread right behind the eye. Bring it back a little ways till it's nice and locked on. Take your marabou feather. Get it a little wet. Measure that out so that the tail is, say, quarter inch to three eighths of an inch out the bit. Soft loop it onto the top of your hook shank. Bind it down as you wrap back. Now, I like this curved hook shank because I think it actually allows the fly to swim a little bit. So I bind that tail back down onto the bend. Clip my excess and then bring my thread back forward. Okay, now what I want to do is bring my thread to approximately one third of the shank. And this is where I attach on the braid to start off with. When I attach it on, I wrap the five and then half hitch. Now I have a rotating vise. And I'm going to be using that feature tonight. The rotating vise actually helps apply the material off the spool a little easier. And then I can keep the spool on a bobbin for thread control. If you don't have all of that, find some sort of spool keeper that you can keep it on here. Latch it in so that if you're wrapping by hand, it controls that material so you don't end up cutting and wasting a whole lot. At the price of this material, and as cheap as I am, I want to get every single. But when you start your wrapping from that third wrap to the end, and when you get to the eye, reverse your thread, or excuse me, reverse that bobbin direction and go back, wrapping down to about half bobbin, wrap up towards the eye. We're building a bulk up in the front end, get to the eye. Reverse it again. This time we're going to go all the way back to the back and cover our thread wraps. These fry are really quite small at this time of year, early, so you don't need a lot of bulk. You're really just trying to get that very slim fish shape. All right, tie off. I crowded the eye a little bit, so I'm going to push that back. Half hitch and a whip finish. So 
So there's the body and a tail. What we're going to do now is use your broad tip black marker that we talked about. But you want to use the uh, thin end of the tip. In other words, head on. Start at the head. Just draw it back and up over the body. Back. That adds that top dark coloration. And the, with the pro braid, it bleeds into the sides a little bit. At this point, get your eyes. And again, on this size fly, the, the 3 30 seconds of an inch, they're a little on the small side. But there's some troubles with it not wanting to hold to the body. Attach both sides, make sure that they're even. And then I always have to press these in. Your eyes are very flat and the body is rounded. So before we put the UV on, we're just going to try to press these, to kind of get them to curve around and attach onto the body. All right, UV resin. Um, for this particular fly, I like to use the thinnest stuff possible. Uh, Loon has one called Flow. Anything that's got the consistency of a fingernail polish work. You're just really coating it, soaking it into the body to seal it and to seal those eyes on. I'm going to get just a little bit more up at the head. By the way, a little trick, if it starts to sag on you in the bottom with a brush, you just draw your brush like that and it'll suck it off. All right. Resin, get the light, seal it up. Um, I have discovered that with UV resin, for those of you who haven't dodged, the ability to use a rechargeable one. Um, I've had battery operated ones. I've had small ones, both small and big. Uh, supposedly with more power. Uh, All right. Once you're coated, that's it. Accept that. All UV resins dry with a little bit of tack on them. Now, the flow doesn't have much, but just to keep this fly from sticking to itself and other ones in there, I always want to give it a coat of a clear fingernail polish. Uh, in this case, it just happens to be Sally Hansen's, but I think the stuff out of the dollar, dollar store works just as well. Wow. Coat the whole fly, go with stick and uh, no stick. Um, it, it's like I said, on a loop knot, because as I said, I think this little bend arc in the body gives it a little bit of motion in the water, and then the loop knot allows it to swing around. Another nap bend, I think we're good. Excellent, Rich. A uh, couple questions for you. The um... The black marker is that does that bleed down through the material is that what's happening there to kind of form some par marks or something uh, the black markers like this that have the square broad tip or what they call a chisel tip mm -hmm. and so that's enough to get it back and forth and then what the the ink itself seems to blend down from the top into the bottom okay along the sides yeah my second question here was about the tail material. Uh, that's Chickaboo. Is that correct? That comes from Grizz. Comes from hen rooster saddle patches. It's all his soft downy feathers towards the end of the saddle. Um, hairline markets what's called grizzly um, marabou in a natural color. And these are all of the feathers. If you've got any older, um, like grizzly capes and stuff, if you start looking at the very back base, you'll see that kind of feather in there too. Okay, I think we're starting to freeze up here a little bit. I got a picture here of the fly that you just tied. So we give folks a... Uh... A close up, close up here.
All right. Well, thanks, Rich. Uh, re really appreciate you coming on to do that. Um, are you going to stick around uh, for the next Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm going to stick around and watch you tell yours. I haven't seen it before. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm going to switch over to... Uh, All right. Uh, in, in, just in a couple of minutes, I'll switch over to, to solo screen for me. But um, here at the uh, kind of the halfway point, I want to I want to apologize again again to folks for the, the uh, delay in getting started here and for some of our technical difficulties. Uh, we worked this out on Saturday, and then today I think we have uh, or tonight on a Monday night we have quite uh, um, a difference in internet speed. It's much slower tonight. <laughs> uh, if you could uh, like and share this video, that would be great. Uh, that way more people can see it. Also, in the comment section, we have a question of the night. And the question of the night is, where are you watching from? And what do you consider your home water? Uh, we've had a few people chime in here. We got Katie uh, watching from Houston. We got Aaron watching from Eagle River. And her home water is Mirror Lake. Very nice. Uh, John is watching from Anchorage, and his home waters are the Susitna Valley and Kenai. Thanks for watching and thanks for commenting. All right, I'm going to get started here in a second. Rich, did you? Did you um, Pour yourself a beer. Yeah. <laughs> no, I just brought water. That's probably what jinxed us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So the fly that I'm going to tie tie tonight is called uh, Pete's Pup. Looks like this. Pete's pup. So this fly, um, a few years ago, I just went over to a friend's house to tie flies. We didn't have any plans to tie any specific flies, but he, he was tying this. Um, his name's Corey. And and he was kind enough to show it to me and then give me some materials to tie it up. And then the next, uh, or the following uh, spring, this was a go-to fly. And I've been using it ever since. Um, similar to fly the rich tide, I, I have fished this in the spring um, on the out migration. And I'll keep fishing it until it stops working. <laughs> so I got here a uh, TMC 5262. This is a 532nd brass bead, and I have Vivas 8 out thread. Start to thread behind the eye here. Let's do a thread base all the way down the shank of the hook. Just to above the barb. I'm going to cut a uh, five to six inch piece of hollow tinsel size medium silver. I'm going to put the tip of this material right up behind the bead. Let's just start to do some loose wraps to trap it. And 
not cooperating. There we go. And then come come up to the top and then come back down. And back up to about an eighth of an inch behind the eye. Or excuse me, behind the bead. I'm gonna do put a couple of whip finishes here. Uh, so I can use the rotary functions. So I'm just going to pinch the material between, between my two fingers here. Get this started and then slide through. If I nick it on the point of the hook, there's a good chance it's going to break. So I'll, uh, I'm going to start pretty slow here. These wraps are, I'm trying just to slightly over wrap one on the other. And at about an eighth of an inch behind the hook here is where I'm going to tie this off. I have a pheasant tail uh, feather, and I'm going to take some of the longer. Uh, actually, I'll probably take this from. Yeah, I'll take this from near the tip, about seven to seven or eight fibers. I want the tips to be uh, just a little bit behind, a little bit past the bend in the hook. I couldn't tell. Katie, oh. she hey, Rich, your uh, mic is on. Yeah, she's on here, and I actually said greetings, Katie. That's what she's doing. So we're going to go tips just past the, the body, or excuse me, just past the uh, bend in the hook here. And then the last uh, piece of this fly is a strong peacock hurl, and I'm going to take two two pieces. You can even take three. You really only need one, but this stuff is so fragile. If I only tied in one, it would probably break, and then I'd be starting all over. So I'm going to tie in three, and then maybe by the time I'm done wrapping it, I'll at least have one left. <laughs> so I'm going to tie these in uh, by the tips. Does it pick up the audio when I do this? Yeah, close caption. That's what it's called. Close caption. Right? I'm gonna gently. See, one broke already. I'm just gonna gently wrap these forward. There we go. Tie that off. I know that these will just break off. Usually. Yep, they're not coming out right now, so don't want to risk pulling them out. 
And uh, I did two, three wrap whip finishes. There's a tiny bit of head cement. And that's it, Pete's Pup. If you know it by another name, please let me know in the comments. I did a uh, Google search and a, uh, a crowdsourced it on the social media with, to see if there was any other name for this fly. And uh, there wasn't. So doesn't mean that I won't be. But... <laughs> Let's bring Rich back on here. Welcome back, Rich. Hey, sir. How you doing? Doing good. We have uh, a few more people joining us here. We got uh, James from Anchorage. He is uh, considers his home water the Blackfoot River in Idaho. We got Charlie. Or more, I don't know if he's from Morro Bay, or that's his home water, or, or maybe both. We got uh, Scott Work in Palmer. Uh, his home water. I know, yeah, he's gonna, with the fly fishers. Yep, he's probably going to be uh, uh, fishing the lakes out here, I'm pretty sure. Huh. Yeah, so we tied two flies tonight. We tied Rich's UV diamond fry. Just like that. We try we tied Pete's pup. Which looks like this. Uh, both are fry patterns, fish early in the springtime. Um Let's see, Rich, you got any uh, parting words for our audience? Yes. No, um, you know, the only thing I'm going to say is that I tie two fry sizes that I'll be in, although you don't have it's the same one. As the season progresses, I go from a number eight to a number six to a number four. And and number four, places like the Kenai, you know, when it opens up there mm -hmm. uh, for the, because the fry are growing. And so any of those late migrating fry will be that big again. And that that fly ends up being inch and a half, inch and three quarters, maybe up to two inches. Um, and I didn't, that wasn't my idea. I just had one of my member or fly fisher members come back to me and told me that he took this pattern, upsized it to a number and made it fatter. And he says it just did well on the Kenai River for him in that very early season. There we go. Take note, folks. <laughs> All right, Rich, and uh, if folks wanted to contact you or take a look at some of your fly patterns, um, how, how can they reach you and where can they find you on the, on the web? Uh um best bet would be is just to uh to choose right now lance is trying to clean it up but just go into your address bar and try type out www two guys fly and that'll pull you over to our, our site and then um some of the flies that we have including this one and uh what i call all the silly fry which is one size up in fact you kind of motivated me into doing a video of this one and uh, once it's done and over on a YouTube channel, I'll uh, share that address with you. You can share it out also. I'll do that for sure. It'll probably be crystal clear video, which I don't think we had tonight, unfortunately. Cool. But when you do make that, when you do make your video a, and put it on YouTube, it'll look good. Shoot it. <laughs> and yeah. 
It does. It does. Yeah. Anyway, Ben, thanks very much. Appreciate being invited. Okay. All right. Yeah. Thanks. And uh, for folks that um, want to watch some more videos, this this will be on our Facebook page and the Highway Triangular YouTube page. And um, we're we're going to do this again next week. I'm not sure what day it yet. So like and follow the Highway Triangular Facebook page. And you'll get a notification uh, when the next uh, one is scheduled. All right. Well, thanks, Rich. I'll talk to you. I'll talk to you soon. Hi, right, buddy. Have uh, a good one. Good to see all you. All right. Thanks for watching, everybody. Yeah.